Hello dear listeners, here we are again with the solutions to group theory. In this exercise we're going to uh, what we're going to compute what we call the Euler rotation representation and in the course of doing that we use the Cayley Hamilton theorem. But first of all in the first uh, parts of the, uh, this exercise we do some pl preliminary stuff. We want to find a matrix which uh, gives us the cross product and to do that we write simply the uh, different vectors in their components uh, r is equal to x, y and z. Now what we find is the cross product between the two is nothing else than n y times z minus n z times y and here you have uh, something else. This is nothing else than the, than the definition of your cross product um, but what you uh, recognize here is that you can write this as a anti-symmetric matrix where you have uh, and the ends on your off diagonal and and z minus n y n x times x y and z and now what you recognize here this is what you have as your matrix u you take n to be your uh, screw axis later, so this is a unit vector. In part b, you use your uh, infinitesimal generators, i, which uh, you're given in the lecture. I write them down for you again so you can uh, see what's happening. But there's uh, to this part of this exercise, there's nothing behind than just recognizing the infinitesimal generators in your matrix u. So what you do is you uh, say that u is uh, the sum of uh, your matrices here times your n's. So what you recognize is uh, i1. To obtain your u you have to multiply i1 with uh, nx. So you have here plus and minus. Uh, you have ny, you have to multiply with i2 and n z times i3 and you recognize that these infinitesimal generators are basically made to give you uh, the matrix u. Now we compute the structural relations between the generators. Our indices k, l and m run here from 1 to 3 and this is a, ve a very easy but uh, quite long calculation which gives you the levi uh symbol right here. There's nothing behind it than just a simple matrix multiplication. Uh, if you haven't done this in a course of mathematical methods in physics, you should do it and go into the details. But if you did this once, you see the pattern and nothing new comes out of it doing it twice. In part C, we use the Cayley-Hamilton theorem. The Cayley-Hamilton theorem states that if you insert into your characteristic polynomial your original matrix it gives you zero. And this is very useful to shift the difficulty of computing powers of your original matrix to uh, computing the characteristic polynomial of your matrix. So how do you apply that to your matrix U? Well, all you do is you uh, compute the characteristic polynomial and when you insert that into your matrix over here, what you get is lambda to the third plus nx squared plus ny squared plus nz squared times lambda. And we said that this is a uh, n is a unit vector, so this is equal to 1. And now you set lambda being equal to u, and all this is then equal to 0. And that gives you by Cayley Hamilton that u to the third is equal to minus u. This solves the problem of computing the powers in your exponential uh, Taylor series from exercise sheet number four. As you might remember, we had the uh, exponential of your matrix and then you, you compute the powers in order to recognize a pattern in the Taylor series and this this theorem, K.D. Hamilton th uh, theorem, gives you the pattern in your exponential series. So uh, you have to only know three different matrices in order to know all powers of u. We look at that. u to the zero is equal to the identity. 
then you have u and u squared. But as soon as you hit u to the third, this is equal to minus u, and u to the fourth is minus u squared, and u to the fifth is u again, and then it repeats. So what does this mean? Well, we look at that in part d. We define the Euler rotation around a axis n with a angle phi as being e to the u times phi. And this is nothing else than the Taylor series from n equal to zero to infinity of phi to the n over n faculty times u to the n. Now you know that only three different matrices occur in this Taylor series. So you can, you can uh, exclude them from the summation. First of all you have the identity matrix, which occurs only once. Then you have the matrix u, which occurs the first time with phi. And then again with phi to the third over three faculty, but here you have a minus sign because of this relation. Then again it occurs with phi to the fifth over five faculty and you have a plus again, so you have minus, plus and so on. And the same is true for u squared. Here you have uh, phi squared over two faculty minus phi to the fourth over four faculty plus minus and so on. So what is this? Well you recognize here a sine and here a cosine. So this is u times sine phi and here you have u squared of 1 minus cosine phi. In part e we apply d on a vector r and all we do is we write that out and what we recognize then is What we recognize then is the relation with we started with. u times r is nothing else than the cross product between the, the screw axis and r vector r. So here you have e times r which is equal to r and then you have u times r which is nothing else than n cross product with r times sine phi. And here you have u applied twice on r so you have n cross product up to n cross product with r times 1 minus cosine phi. And this is the Euler rotation representation and it's also uh, given in the exercise sheet so you should have expected this result. Thank you for watching. If you have any questions please don't hesitate to send me an email. I'll be glad to hear from you.